Hello, football fans, and welcome to Waco ISD Stadium for another exciting night of Texas high school football as we kick off the 2024 high school football season with the University Trojans hosting the Keller Central Chargers. I'm Lark Smith along with Hal Harris and our statistician Paul Comer and the rest of the Trojan Media production crew. And we are basically Hal champing at the bit to get this football season started. Been waiting uh, 40 weeks since the last <laughs> time we uh, saw University play Crockett here. So, yes, we are looking, looking forward to this season. You know, University's coming in with a uh, ton of talent returning, especially on offense. London Smith, a receiver, wanted by nearly every major college out there, and he's only a junior. He has multiple offers out there. Cade Bynum's moving from uh, quarterback to receiver this year to give him some more speed at the wideout positions. And then you got Ladarius Evans coming back as a senior. He's the uh, running back who rushed for over 1,200 yards, and he's going to be joined by a young man named J.D. Bell who rushed for over 2,300 yards over at Mart last year. Uh, Savoy Nichols is going to be the quarterback taking charge of this offense. He's a sophomore. Uh, on the defense, you, all you have to do is look at their three linebackers that are all returning. Joaquin Martinez, who was the uh, 2023 Super Syntex Defensive Newcomer of the Year, along with Armani Franklin and Joseph Caballero. Between the three of those, Lark, they've started 47 games just for University High. The Keller Central Chargers went 0-10 a year ago. They're under the direction of a brand-new coach this year. Eric Vance has taken over the Chargers program. He was the uh, offensive coordinator at L.D. Bell High School in the Fort Worth area, taking over from Mike Sports after he had four years with the Chargers. The University Trojans a year ago, 7-4, made it to the postseason, but lost right here at Waco ISD Stadium to Austin Crockett in the postseason. In a game, I believe it was just decided by one point. So the, the those returning players for the Trojans definitely would like to get a little deeper in the playoffs this year than last year. The captain's about to meet at midfield for the University Trojans. Number one is London Smith. Number eight is Cade Bynum. Also, excuse me, number zero, that's uh, Joaquin Martinez. They also have number 23. Darius Evans, as well as number 54, Micah Willis. Those are the start of the uh, captains for the University Trojans. Our officials for the game tonight, our referee is Nelson Barnes. Our umpire is Rodney Harris. Daryl Ward takes care of the head linesman's duty. Stephen Stone is the line judge. Michael Teal, the back judge. Jarrell Proctor is the field judge, and Alan Ray Dykins is the side judge. They're all from the Waco chapter of the Texas Association of Sports Officials. Al, did you see who won the toss? University is going to receive the ball. Okay. At this time, the presentation of the colors by the University Junior ROTC. Let's go to our stadium announcer, George Snookout. The color guard are the United States flag, Cadet Captain Juan Morris. Texas flag, Cadet Command Sergeant Major Victoria Martinez. Right rifle, Cadet Captain Alexis Guajardo. Left rifle, Cadet Captain Jonah Renard. The Junior ROTC instructors are Army Instructor First Sergeant First Class Marcus Hainer and the Chief Warrant Officer Matthew Francis. At this time, we'll have the playing of the National Anthem by the University Band.
UIL did its biannual realignment back in February. The University Trojans still in 5A Division II, but the Waco Lions have now joined them in the 5A Division II classification. They've been moved into a district that also has a team that was part of last year's district, Belton, but they have added in Brenham, and Brenham, University, and Belton are probably the three teams that are going to be the top teams in this league, Hal. Absolutely. You know, the, uh, the team that for University, the, they've got so much experience coming back, especially in the uh, offensive side of the ball. Uh, a senior, all five offensive linemen, I believe, are seniors. And then all the receivers uh, are juniors, and the quarterback is a sophomore. And then you flip it over to the defensive side of the ball. They've got eight returning starters, who, and that unit was a really good unit last year for university. So I'm, I'm looking for good things this year from this whole team. Second year for K. Ron Johnson as the head coach of the University Trojans. It's his first job as a head coach in Texas high school football. He came to University from Midway High School where he was their defensive coordinator. Well, the Trojans will receive the kickoff. Going back to receive is number 13, Carlos Perez, and number 17, Caden Grimm. Trojans in there. Purple jerseys, black pants. The Chargers in the white jerseys and maroon pants. Chase, laughter number 21 will be kicking off for Keller Central. I think he's waiting for a football. No, he needed a tee, that's what he needed. Chase has got a nice leg. He was kicking 48-yard uh, field goals in practice, so we know he can get it deep. He's got a bit of a breeze at his back here. We're kind of an unusual situation for the first game of the year with an east breeze at 10 to 15 miles per hour, and we're under 90 degrees to start the football season, 88 degrees and 59% relative humidity. Very comfortable night tonight. See if the Chargers elect to kick it deep. Or if they're going to pooch it up. Comes to the near side. Hits at the 20-yard line. Picked up on a bounce. And out to the 33-yard line goes Cade Perez. Knocked off his feet by Caden Williams, number 20 for Keller. So that will bring out the university offense. Led by their sophomore quarterback, Savoy Nichols. He'll have either J.D. Bell or L.D. Evans in the backfield with him. He's got four really good receivers to go to. London Smith, Kate Bynum, Jamari Thomas, or Keandre Brooks. Three of those receivers off to the right out of the shotgun. Nichols turns and hands it off to the running back. down by Brayden Nichols, number 22. And that was a different number than what I was expecting to see. Is that a 40 that I saw carry the ball? Or was it 20? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's 23, I believe. Oh, 23, okay. Well, that would be Ladarius Evans. On the jet sweep, they pitch it inside to London Smith. He avoids tacklers and has the first down all the way out to the 48-yard line. Dylan Pickview, number 24 on the tackle. You just saw the speed there of London Smith, incredibly fast. Picked up the first down. Stacked receivers to the right of the formation. Handed off in the backfield. That's J.D. Bell with his first carry as a University of Trojan. He has it into Charger territory at the 49. We're going to see a lot of those two uh, running backs all season long for University. Pickup of 
three on the play for Bell. Out of the hurry up offense, the Trojans put Bell to the left of the quarterback, fake the handoff, back to pass for the first time. Nichols, he has plenty of time and delivers a little long. Trying to get that out to Keandre Brooks. Keandre had his defender defeated. Ball was just a little overthrown. But that's the kind of uh, attempts that the university can make all season long. They've got a lot of speed out there at the four wideouts. Sets up a third and seven. Evans the slot back on the near side. They send Bynum in motion. Pitch it into the flat and it's overthrown. A little too tall. Trying to get that out to Perez. So Nichols is missed on his first two tries. See if University decides to go for it here at midfield or they're going to try to punt it away facing fourth and seven. They leave the offense on the field. That's the kind of confidence that K. Ron Johnson has in this offense. Nichols a straight drop back with time, throws in the flat. It's a little too tall for London Smith. So they put it over on downs with 10.30 left to go in the first quarter. Trojans had the ball for a minute and 30 seconds. Now the Chargers get their opportunity on offense. Their quarterback is Landon Smith, a senior. He's got a couple of running backs to call on. That's Dylan McAfee and Spencer Martin. And a couple of really nice wideouts in Mason Caudle and Jordan Brown. They'll work out of the shotgun. Running back is McAfee. McAfee takes a handoff straight over left tackle and has a first down. Picking up 11 yards into the university's territory at the 40 yard line. Joe Cavallaro along with Armani Franklin bringing him down after a nice game. First first down for the Chargers. Now they have somebody getting in the backfield quickly. That's DQ Evans. He says somebody moved on the offensive line and the officiating staff agrees. Yeah, defensive line tonight for the university will be number 99, Ronald Derrick, number 10, DQ Irwin, number 20, Camarion Kendall, number 34, Elijah Chairs. And from the University 45, it's first and 15. Get some good protection, but now rushed out of the pocket. Urban giving chase, he throws and it's incomplete. Good defense there on the part of the Trojans, Kirkland. Probably but gonna the, have holding in there. Yeah, another flag on the play. Yeah, when you get a quarterback that's scrambling around like that, it's highly probable you're gonna get a holding penalty. Great coverage in the secondary. They didn't have anybody open at all. They were covered up, the wide receivers. Well, that'll be first and 25, the ball back in the Chargers territory at their 45-yard line. And once again, we're going to have a flag for motion. Yep. Apparently, the Chargers not on the same page as far as the snap count. Shooting themselves in the foot here on this first drive. They had the ball down on the 40-yard line, first and 10. Three consecutive penalties for 20 yards backward, back to their own 40. Spencer Martin, the sophomore, has checked in at the running back spot. Smith sends a man in motion, bad snap. Smith will just fall on it. It's one of those things Bush Henry never liked was that shotgun snap. Well, you know, last year, this team, 
was 0-10, and, and they, they struggled mightily on offense. They could only generate about 200 yards a game last year. That loss 11 yards all the way back to the 29-yard line brings up second and 41. You don't see that very often. You don't have that play in your play in your playbook, do you? And almost every play is supposedly designed to go for a touchdown, but not the way it happens. Play clock's down to five seconds. They may get a delay of penalty here. They sure did. enough. Delay game. Offense, drive started at the University 40. It's now back to the Chargers 25 or 24. Jeremiah Green has come in at a free safety number 25 for University, along with Andre Young, who's at the left defensive end spot. Good snap this time to Smith. Rushes out of the pocket, throws downfield. It's overthrown. Trying to get that out to Mason Caudle. Joseph Foster defending on the play. Well, that's third and 46. They have to get all the way to the university 30-yard line for a first down. This worked out better than a punt, didn't it? Yes. <laughs> Three receivers to the left side. Jordan Brown in the middle of those. Vincent Beck right behind him, but going straight up the middle, just trying to get any yardage whatsoever. Joaquin Martinez wrapping him up as soon as he hit the line of scrimmage. So Spencer Martin gets a couple out of it. Out to the 27-yard line. Giving three, brings up fourth and 43. Looks and like uh, Kate Bynum, Mark, is gonna receive this punt for University. He waits at his own 47, 46 yard line. I believe the quarterback, London, Landon Smith, is gonna be the punter. He is, gets no rush, low liner. Bynum takes it and gets it into Charger territory up to the 49-yard line. Turn of about nine yards on that punt return. DeAndre Henry, number 88 in on the tackle. So the University gets the ball for the second time with 7.52 to go in our first quarter, and they start in the Chargers into the field at the opponent 49-yard line. 22-yard net punt. The Apparently somebody in the stands has a noisemaker that maybe resembles a whistle or something and the fishing staff needs officially officiating staff needs that to no longer happen. Same with the University Trojans, it would be a penalty against them. Nichols hands it off. Evans. Very little, if any, gain on the play. Let's give him one to the 48. Holden Myers in on the tackle. J.D. Bell now checked into the backfield. Fake the handoff to Bell, throw across the middle, and it's complete. Gets it out to Justin Neal, the tight end, and Neal fights his way for the first down up to the 37-yard line. Took about eight bodies to bring him down. Justin Neal is a really tall receiver, quick, put on about 20 pounds, I believe his coach said, uh, over the, over the offseason. Second first down for the Trojans here in the first half. Again, Nichols has plenty of time in the pocket, throws, it's complete to London Smith, and he's in the end zone for the touchdown. 37-yard pitch and catch from Savoy Nichols to London Smith, and the Trojans are on the board first. Outstanding play there. This team has got a lot of speed at the wideout positions, and it's going to be incredibly difficult for these kids to cover every one of them. 
great pass by Savoy. That's got to give him some confidence after he missed on two or three attempts early. Kick the extra point for Waco for University High will be Micah Hatton. Kate Bynum will be holding. And the deep snapper is Juan Martinez. Good snap and hold. Looked like it got tipped, Lark. Yep, it went, went wide to the right. So with Six minutes and 55 seconds left to go in the first quarter. The University Trojans are on top by a score of six to nothing on this nice little crossing pattern by London Smith. Play uh, the drive is 49 yards in three plays and only took 57 seconds to get on the scoreboard. Now you got to believe that head coach Eric Vance for the Chargers is trying to figure out how to keep his team from shooting itself in the foot. First possession jitters probably more than anything else. They just got to calm down and play to the best of their ability. They've got a young team. And really, they don't have that many numbers for a 6A ball club on that, on that squad over there. Back deep to receive the punt or to receive the kickoff is Jordan Brown. As well as Dylan McAfee. Micah Hatton will be kicking off for University. Actually, they got six guys looking for the kickoff. You know, the way that they've been kicking off recently in high school football, you don't know just how deep they're going to kick it. So I can understand that formation of the five guys up front and the six guys back at different depths. Waiting to see just where the kick is going to be coming down. As many years as we've been calling these games, we've only seen maybe one or two or three kickers that can actually smash it into the end zone. Most of the time, they just pooch it to protect themselves. Make it easier to cover if they only go down 30 yards. The left footer approaches. Gets it all the way down inside the 20. Nice opening there for McAfee to run through. Knocked down by Andre Young, number 27 for University. Well, this drive will start at their 37 yard line. And hopefully for the Chargers, it doesn't go backward like their first drive did. It started at the University 40, and they ended up having to punt the ball from their own 27-yard line. After 25 yards and penalties, plus a loss on a bad snap of 11 yards. Well, their quarterback, Landon Smith, did play a lot last year for them, so they do have experience at the quarterback position. Tight end checking onto the near side, 88 is DeAndre Henry. Looking for Henry in the flat, and somebody are actually they trying to get that out to Jeremiah Parker. And Parker maybe ran that route a little deeper than the quarterback expected. Yeah, he never even turned around to even see the ball. They weren't on the same page on that play. Brings up second down and ten. We've got that. Jeremiah Green Lark at the uh, left cornerback position for University number 25. And hands the ball to McAfee. He's got running room over the left side. Breaks the tackle. Has the first down and more as he gets it into university territory. All the way down to the 46-yard line. And Jay Davis knocking him down at the play. A lot of speed by that running back. 17 yards on the pickup for McAfee. First down. Smith once again hands it to McAfee. He follows Henry around the right side this time. And gets up to the 39 yard line for a gain of seven on the play. Number three, McAfee on the carry around the right side. 
Zachariah Ruiz, number nine, made the initial contact, but he was knocked down by about four of the university players. Second down and three. They've opened up a couple of nice holes, that offensive line for Keller. Three receivers to the right. And once again, they'll stay with the running game. Spencer Martin gets it out across the 30. Down to about the 26 yard, 27 yard line. Nice run by Spencer Martin. Zachariah Ruiz on the tackle number 12 for University. Pickup of 12 on the play. Make it 13. First and 10 from the 27. Send Henry in motion from right to left. Hand off to Martin. He's stuffed in the backfield, but having to get around the corner inside the 20 and falls forward to the 15 for another first down. Jeremiah Green with the tackle. Nice bit of offensive uh, rushing attack going on by Keller right now. In the red zone for the first time tonight for the Keller Central Chargers. McAfee back at the running back spot. He goes straight over center and he's met by one of the university linebackers and slammed to the ground after a one yard gain. Joaquin Martinez lifting them off right off the ground and putting them back down. Looks like number 90 in the defensive line for University. Zion Wright has come in. The replacement of Ronald Derrick. Pretty form tackle by Martinez there. Second and nine from the 14. Chargers trail by six. McAfee goes around the left side. He's into the end zone from 15, 14 yards out for the touchdown. We're going to have, there's a penalty. There was holding on the outside by Keller. Yep, there is a penalty flag laying down at the 10 yard line. Looked like he might have even had his hand up into his face mask, you know, hand up against the face. Right. Here's Nelson Barnes. Oh, that's against the university. Okay. It'll be added to the kickoff, so the touchdown is good for McAfee from 14 yards out. We got a tie ball game at six and six, with 3:49 left to go in the first quarter. Very impressive uh, drive put together by Keller, all on the ground. Number four is going to come in and kick the extra point. The Austin Moon. The Austin Moon is going to be holding. Sorry, 21 Jace. Laughter. They're going to go to the swinging gate. See if they run it for the two point. Nope. The quarterback says, let's all just come back in here. Actually, that's the holder, which is Austin Moon. Yep, they're going to push him back five yards. They're going to lay a game. That's the fifth penalty already against Keller Central. So now from the 15 yard line, a 25 point extra point attempt. On its way and good. 349 left to go first quarter. Keller Central Chargers grab a 7-6 lead over the University Trojans as the Chargers complete a 63-yard drive that took seven plays and three minutes and six seconds off the clock. Very impressive rushing game on that second uh, drive there. Just, just pushed back that defensive line in the University. Had some pretty wide open gaps there. I have to make some adjustments here quickly. We have Bush's chicken. 
We have Ascension Medical Group. We have Ollie. We have Dr. Pepper. You know, they went 63 yards in just three minutes. That's a pretty quick drive for when you're just rushing the football. Mm-hmm. Both teams not able to score on their first drive of the game, but each team able to get it in the end zone on their second drive. The Trojans on a 37-yard pass to London Smith, while the Chargers just ran down the throat of the Trojans. The 14-yard TD run by Dylan McAfee. Carlos Perez, number 13, and Caden Grimm, number 17, are back for University. Jace Laughter will be kicking off for Keller. Many years as I've been doing football play-by-play, -play, that may be the first player that I've ever come across with the last name of Laughter. <laughs> I've never seen it before either. So the penalty is going to be marked off against the Trojans. I don't think the kicker understands that he's supposed to bring the ball up. All right there. Well, now the back judge is going to mark it off. And that's going to be a 10 or 15 yard penalty. It looks like it's a 10 yard. Is that right? No, it's 15 yard. Hands to the face. So they'll kick off from the university's. 45 yard line. Perfect opportunity here for an onside kick, Lark. That it is. And I'm sure the Trojan special teams have been schooled to that possibility. falls off the tee, so we'll try again. Again, we've got a wind coming out of the east about 10 to 15 miles per hour, which is an unusual direction for wind here at Waco ISD Stadium this early in the season. Usually it's out of the south. He does onside kick it to the far side. Trojans unable to come up with it. There's a scramble for the ball between the 25 and 30 yard line in university's end of the field. Still waiting for an official to tell us who has the football, and it's university's football at the bottom of the pile coming out with it is Laquan Hughes. Wow, that was scary. Took a perfect bounce. Looked like they're trying to grab a basketball out there. <laughs> at the 27-yard line is where university will start this drive. Roy Nichols, the quarterback with Darius Bell in the backfield with him. He'll pitch it to Cade Bynum on the jet sweep coming around. Bynum avoids a tackler and is being written out of bounds at the 40-yard line after a pickup of 12. Kyle Smith, number 13, finally bringing him down. You just saw how fast Cade, Cade Bynum is. He is a really quick, elusive runner. So they've got a lot of speed at receiver this year. First and 10 from the university 41-yard line. Nichols hands off to Bell. He goes straight up the middle. Carries a tackler with him up to the 46-yard line for a gain of five on the play. Eight snow in on the tackle, number 17. Bell now out. Placed in the backfield by Ladarius Evans. Always nice to keep a fresh set of legs in the backfield. Nice job to find the hole by Evans. 
Gets the first down as he takes it down to the 46 yard line and the Chargers into the field from 146 to the other 46. That's eight yard pickup for Evans. And another first down. Offensive line doing its job behind the center Carlos Navarro. Evans looking for some running room, finds a little bit, and maybe gets a yard out of it, and that's all up to the 46 from the 47 to the 46. Tripped up by Chancellor David, number 15. Second and nine from the 46. Cards are Deontay Walker and Molo Dowling. The tackles Gio Longari on Michael Willis. Play being changed from the sideline with 10 seconds left on the play clock. Nichols looking to pass, steps up in the pocket. And get it back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. I think maybe he tucked that a little early. He did. If, if he had been able to just look up just for a second, Kate Bottom, there was nobody within 10 yards of him. If he had been able to hit him, it would have been an easy touchdown. They mark it at the 47. That's a one yard loss. Brings up third down and 10. And the question now is where is number one? He is at the top of your screen as the wide out closest to the far sideline. Kate by the minute quarterback throws it to London Smith on the out pattern and London Smith has the first down at the 34-yard line. Justin Nail checking back in and tight end. Pick up a 13 on the pitch and catch from Bynum to Smith. He keeps the drive alive. Bynum stays in at quarterback. Fake the handoff. He's dragged down at the 32 yard line for a two yard gain. Jake Richards with a nice tackle there. Cade Bottom a year ago, 94 carries for 394, 97 yards as a quarterback. He completed almost 60% of his passes last year. Well, if that was a quarterback draw or if he just decided to run with it, but he gets a yard maybe up to the 31 yard line. Hayden Snow number 17 in on the tackle along with number 30, but I don't have a number for number 30. Okay, we've got Savoy Nichols back at quarterback now. Okay. Quarter's gonna end. That is the end of the first quarter. The of the first quarter. After the first 12 minutes, our score is Keller Central 7 and University 6. Now let's go down to the field to Ava for a special interview. Hi, I'm Eva Rodriguez with TMP, and I'm here with Osmar. And today I have a few questions for you. How are you feeling in the senior year? How are you feeling? Uh, stressful. It's stressful for sure. A little stressful. I heard you have a drum major, sorry. Yeah, I'm a drum major. And I heard you went to band camp. Did you go to band camp? How was that? Uh, tiring, because it was, it was a lot. Can you tell us a little bit about like the performance you're going to be putting on halftime? We're performing our new show. I think it's called Angels and Demons, and we're going to play Movement One. Thank you so much, Osmar. And back to you, and stick around for the halftime performance. Well, we turn things around. The University Trojans on the march here, starting at their own 27-yard line. Ninth play of the drive, trying to recapture the lead. Working from their own 31-yard line, facing a third down and seven. Bynum and London Smith, the two inside receivers on the left side. Smith goes in motion. They fake the jet sweep to him and hand it off up the middle. Evans not able to get enough for the first down there. Bryce Barton along with Hayden Snow on the tackle. Picked up three yards to the 28. 
Trojans for the second time tonight going up, going for it on fourth down. They turn the ball over on downs in the first quarter going on fourth down. Nichols stays in the pocket, throws for the end zone for London Smith, and London Smith has it in the end zone for the touchdown from 28 yards out. Al Smith was right with him. London just made a great jump and catch. Just a really good athlete. Here you'll see the replay. Just throw it in the corner and let the athlete do his work. And London Smith comes down with it for the six. His second touchdown catch of the night. Looks like the university's going to go for two. Got J.D. Bell in the backfield with Savoy. Nichols hands it off to Bell, and Bell dives into the end zone for the two points. Good blocking by that offensive line there on the right-hand side for University. 11 minutes, 14 seconds left to go in the first half. University Trojans back on top by a score of 14 to 7. They went 63 yards in 10 plays. And took, if I can do my math here. Let's see. I think that was 4 minutes and 23 seconds. Good mixture of run and pass on that drive. They just have that kind of balance this year. If all these guys stay healthy, they're, they're going to be tough to deal with on the offensive side of the football for anybody who's defending them. Micah Hatton will be kicking off for University. Jordan Brown is deep number eight along with number three, Dylan McAfee. Keller. Short kick coming to the near side is going to go out of bounds. See if Keller decides to take the penalty or re-kick. I believe they're just going to take the five-yard penalty that's going to move kick the ball up. Ball be placed on the 30-yard line, first down. And they're going to place it at the 30. Well, you would assume that Keller will come out here and continue to uh, try to establish that ground game just like they did on that last drive. Smith fakes the handoff, has some running room around his right side and picks up the first down. Gets it out to the 40 for a 10-yard gain. Devontre Kirkland in on the tackle. I believe that's the first time he's carried the ball. That's correct. Good fake and, and nobody stayed with him. Nice executed play by Keller. First and 10 with one receiver to the left, two to the right. Once again, fake the handoff. They pitch it this time to McAfee. He's got lots of running room. A nice cutback gets him inside the 20 down to the 15-yard line, maybe the 14. Kamarian, Tell you what, McAfee's got some speed. He has a lot of speed. Camarion Kendall finally brought him down. Well-executed play and... Uh, 
University just wasn't in position there on defense. 45 yard pickup for McAfee. He's racking up some yards so far. I've got him with 95 yards on six carries. 55 yards in two plays. Take the handoff to Spencer. Smith keeps, gets away from one would be tackler. Gets it down to about the nine yard line for a pickup of six. Armani Franklin bringing it down, number 21 for the University. Second and four at the nine. They found out some kind of offensive package they like, and they're staying with it. And they're, they're getting some huge yards on these plays. Coming to the left side this time. Spencer able to squeeze through and get inside the five yard line to about the three. Well, mark him at the four for a five yard pickup. Ronald Derrick, number 99, brought him down. He was slowed up some by Joaquin Martinez. But it's first and goal. From inside the five, they're back to the line of scrimmage quickly. Martin trying to find some room over the right side. Very little to go for there and no gain on the play. Monty Franklin in on the tackle, number 21. Number 22, Juan Martinez has come in in place of Joaquin Martinez at the linebacker position. Looking for the corner of the end zone. Unable to come up with it is Mason Caudle. Caden Grimm defending on the play. Third London, down goal. Yeah, London Smith's going to come in now on the defense. To, he's a little bit taller player. They can contend with number seven, who looks to be really tall for Keller. Mm-hmm. Fake the handoff and into the end zone is the quarterback, Landon Smith, with the touchdown. Once again, the whole drive all on the ground, Lark. Mm -hmm. They've come out with an option package, and the university's just going to have to adjust to it, and they will. Once again, going out of the swinging gate, straight up the middle after the snap is Austin Moon for the two-point conversion. We got a flag, though. We got a flag. Holding the offense. Ten-yard penalty. Yeah. Play the drive. Once again, the Chargers bitten by the penalty bug. Take the points off the board. Jason Laughter, 21, try the extra point. Holding is number four, Austin Moon. Goes wide to the left. That penalty was big there. Certainly was. Took two points off the board. Keeps the Trojans in the lead at 14 to 13. With 8.30 left to go in the first half. That drive goes 70 yards in seven plays. Took 244 off the second quarter clock. 10 yards of play. They got a defense got to shore that up, don't they? Yes, they do. 
Last four possessions total by both teams have amounted to uh, long touchdown drives. And the Trojans went 63 yards, Chargers 70 yards. Again, this is a 6A team visiting from Keller, taking on a 5A Division II team in university. Just because of it would sound like a mismatch on paper, but not so. Once again, you're going to get Perez and Grim deep. Chase Lafter, number 21, will be kicking off for Keller. We've got Jamari Thomas, number three, at about his own 20-yard line. Pop it up. 25-yard line. Ooh, a nice block in there, and if he gets one more block, he could go. Got a penalty flag, though, back at the point of where the ball was kicked, and that's a really nice return by Perez. Hopefully we can see on the video here exactly who, who threw that clearing block. Someone threw a block just to win. If he gets that block there, Jamari Thomas missed the block there, but we're going to add five yards to the end of the return. The Trojans are going to have great field position here to start this drive. It'll be the second time they've started inside their own 50-yard line. They're at the Charger 44. See if they go for the home run here. Got Landon Smith going wide to the left side. Savoy Nichols, the quarterback. Fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, and has some running room. Got a flag back where you normally see holding after he picked up about 14 yards on the play. Let's find out the meaning of the flag. There's two of them there, so two officials saw whatever it was. That's two fouls on the play. Holding on the offense, number 58. That penalty will be declined. Holding on the offense, number 54. That'll be accepted. 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. Well, that's the first flag that I remember against University other than on the kick out of bounds. It is. Bring up first down and 20. Move them back to their own territory. Back to the 49-yard line. Behind a minute quarterback, fakes the handoff, takes it around the left side, looking for some running room. Only gets maybe a yard out of it to the 50. Austin Moon, number four, in on the tackle. Second and 19 at midfield after the one yard pickup by Cade Bynum, the junior quarterback. Savoy had to come out of the game because he lost his helmet on that last play. They keep buying them at quarterback. Looking to pass. Steps up in the pocket. Can't get out from under the rush and sacked back at the 45. Number 17, Hayden Snow. Mark it back at the University 44. It's a loss of six on the play. Brings up a third down and 25. They have to get to the 34 yard line to pick up the first down. Savoy Nichols back in at the quarterback spot. And now timeout called by the University timeout Offensive University Brain Trust with six minutes and 43 seconds left to go in our first half. Trojans on top of the Chargers by a score of 14-13. Yeah, 
third and 24 is third and 22 is a is a long stretch. They can they can do it, but if they were playing for 10 yards and 12 yards, based on how well Keller is rushing the football right now, you, you'd want to punt it away instead of going for it on fourth down. Well, you got to believe the defensive coordinator on the other side is saying triple team number one. Correct. <laughs> but then that opens up Cade Bynum and. Jamari Thomas and Keandre Brooks, which are pretty good speedsters themselves. There's a lot of speed at the receiving position this year for the university. Very difficult to double cover. Brooks will be the wide receiver to the far side by himself. Trips to the near side with London Smith, the outside receiver. Boy surveys the offensive line, sends a man in motion, throws across the middle. That's complete to Cade Bynum for the first down and more. Bynum inside the 25. Down to about the 24-yard line. Dylan Pico, number 24 on the tackle. Well-executed play there, just a slant inside. Forty two yards. They do pick up the first down. At the twenty four. Bass to the flat to London Smith sidesteps a would be tackler and then fights his way forward down to about the 16. Gabriel Cobbs knocking London down at the knees. Picked up eight on the play. Second down and two. Offense looking for that rhythm. And there's speed up offense. And it off to Evans over the right side. He's down to the 10, maybe the nine. Give him a six yard pickup to the 10 and it's first and goal. Austin Martin with a nice tackle. Clock moving with five and a half minutes left to go in the first half. Justin Neal coming back in at tight end number 15 for University. J.D. Bell at the running back spot now. Five seconds left on the play clock. Nichols takes a snap, throws in the flat to Bynum. He left sidesteps a one would be tackler and then takes another one to the goal line all the way down to the one. A nine yard pickup on the pass to Cade Bynum. Dylan Pico with the tackle for Keller. They were giving Cade 10 yards. Nobody was close to him and then they shot a linebacker out after he threw the ball. Well, second and goal from the one. Looks like we had an injury on the play as leaving the game for the Chargers is Austin Moon. Yeah, he's a starting uh, safety for him. Also got another player being helped to the sideline. I believe that is Hayden Snow. So the Keller defense minus a couple of their starters on the goal line here. Just straight forward, Savoy Nichols follows the blocks of his center, Carlos Navarro, to get it into the end zone for the touchdown. <laughs> Nothing fancy there, just shove him out of the way and let me fall forward for the TD. Micah Hatton in for the extra point. Kate Bynum is holding. No good. Got a flag. Now yeah, there is a flag in the backfield from the referee. Nelson Barnes. 
Talking with the umpire, Rodney Harris. Yeah, they're going to go for two. It's number 10 on the defense. He did not have a, in a stand and made contact. That's half the distance to the goal. Replay the drive. Okay, so now after the penalty, penalties are just killing the Chargers tonight. Trojans will go for two here. Out of the shotgun. Nichols gives it to Bell. Bell will fight his way in for the two-point conversion. And he's done that once before tonight, hasn't he? Yes, he has. So with 4.25 left to go in our first half, the University Trojans extends their lead to 22 to 13. They go on a 44-yard drive that took eight plays and 4.05 off of the first quarter or the second quarter clock. There you see the two-point conversion by Darius Bell. Big play, though, being that third down and about third and 22, and they gained about 40 yards on that pass to Kate Bottom. Mm -hmm. Keep that drive alive. They are giving Kate a lot of room along with London Smith, you're given 10 yards off. It's easy to hit those receivers if you're going to go for the short ones. And that's kind of what we expected coming into this season to see the passing game kind of pull the offense out of any trouble that should come about. Savoy has got a cannon for an arm. He's six foot four, and he's just a sophomore, so he's learning. Just a pup. Micah Hatton will be kicking off. Receiving will be McAfee, number three, along with number eight, Jordan Brown, for Keller. Kicks this one deep, all the way down to the six yard line. Brown gets a good block, takes it across the 25. Carries a couple of would-be tacklers across the 35 and almost to the 40-yard line. That's a nice determined run. It's going to come back, though. I can see. Oh, man. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Hit him in the back. I can see it from here. You know, as a guy that used to return punts, that's just deflating. When <laughs> you make a good run like that, all of a sudden it's brought back. It's number 17 on the ground for Caden Grimm for University. Maybe he's the one who got blocked in the back. So that's going to back up the Chargers somewhere around their 10 yard line. That's either the eighth or ninth penalty. How many do you show for them for the game so far, Keller? I think it's eight. Now that's a half the distance to the goal from the 10, so it's, or maybe it's like a six yard penalty. Now they're gonna mark it at the eight yard line. Worst field position to start a drive for the Keller Central Chargers. Landon Smith will have a back to each side. McAfee and Martin. He's going to try to pass it in the flat. It's tipped, but still gets to the target at the 10 yard line. Not sure who got a hand on it, but coming up with the catch is Jeremiah Parker. Michael Davis defending for the university is well covered on that pass play. Two yard pickup brings up second down and eight. Fakes the handoff. Smith keeps it a flag into the play and he gets maybe a yard up the 11 yard line. Let us see the meaning of the 
yellow laundry on the field. Yeah, Joseph Caballero with the tackle. Holding offense number 52. Half the distance to the goal. Replay second down. Well, that'll mark them if the flag is actually at the seven yard line. Now they're going to mark it at the five. Basically a five yard penalty for holding. Repeat the down. Correction. Penalty was declined. Third down. Oh, okay. They're going to decline the penalty. Because they only got a yard out of the play as it was, so it's be at the eleven yard line, second down and seven. Or make that third down and seven. Smith rolling, chased, gets out from under it, but finally is brought down. Camarion Kendall was putting a lot of heat on him. Smith will lose back to the seven yard line. Well, maybe that's where they just started at, wasn't it? So it's fourth down from the seven. And the punting unit headed to the field. Number 11, Landon Smith will be punting. We'll see who University is going to drop back. I'm not sure they're going to drop back anybody. Yep, now they send Cade Bynum out there. Kicking into a wind of about 10 miles per hour. Gets a good snap, not much of a rush. Gets the kick off, going to the far side of the field. Bynum picks it up on a bounce and then goes out of bounds. At about the 35-yard line and the Chargers end of the field. So the Trojans have 241 to play with here at the end of the first half to try to add to a 22-13 to 13 lead. 27 yards on the punt. Pre-legal formation on the offense. Five players in the backfield. That will be enforced from the end of the kick. Five yards. Wow. Uh-oh, Bynum <laughs> is down on the ground. They're going to add. He's got a cramp. Cramp. Yep. Get him some pickle juice. Well, the ninth penalty against the Chargers here will add some yardage to the return. That is hard to overcome. Oh, absolutely. That's one of those things that tomorrow morning uh, in the film room, there's going to be a lot of discussion about those penalties. <laughs> they just work you over mentally. Besides, because you have to keep fighting up a hill when you keep making mistakes that cost you yardage. Yeah, they're going to mark it at the 29-yard line. It's a five-yard penalty from the 34. Well, this will be the third time out of five possessions universities had the ball inside their own 50-yard line, or the opponent's 50-yard line. I think they were deciding whether they're going to re-kick it or what, but they're going to go from the 29-yard line. Nichols has Evans in the backfield with him. Running an extra tight end. Hand it off to Evans. Evans tries to bounce it outside, gets around the corner to the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, and knocked out of bounds, he's but he's in for the touchdown. Was able to Tight rope the sideline and get it in from 29 yards out. Muscled it in on the last two, two yards by going through a number 13, Miles Smith, who probably didn't want any part of it. Coming right into your living room and just dives his way for the pylon for the touchdown. That's how you score in 10 seconds. Looks like they're going to go for two again. J.D. Yes. Bell's coming in for yep. running back. Got London Smith out here on the right side. Man to man. Nichols. We got a flag. Delay a game. Yep. Took too long. Five-yard penalty. Replay the try. Well, I don't think it's going to matter as to what university had planned to do. <laughs> yeah, it might help. <laughs> A few 
them a little bit more room to operate. Well, once again, we have a flag, and I think they took too long again. Yeah, we got procedure this time. Number 75, five-yard penalty, replay the try. Had two men moving at the same time, apparently. Saw the man in motion, Brooks. Somebody on the offensive line was moving. That was Gio Longoria. But that offensive line has done a heck of a job tonight. Center Carlos Navarro, the guards. Vetti Walker and... Bolo Dowling and the tackles Gio Longoria and Michael Willis. Nichols throws across the middle. Complete for the two point conversion to Brooks. It took a strong throw to get that ball right in that gap right there. He's got a really nice arm. The two point pass to DeAndre Brooks makes it 30 to 13 in favor of the University Trojans with 231 left to go in our first half. Trojans struck like lightning on this drive, just one play to go the 29 yards in 10 seconds and then add the two point conversion. And taking some control here just before halftime. Well, that's four out of five positions for university that resulted in touchdowns. You can't get much better than that first half play. Yeah, they were unsuccessful on their first drive as they turned the ball over on downs after picking up just one first down. And gave it to the opponent in their own in the in their own end of the field. Micah Hatton will be kicking off for university. McAfee and Brown will be deep for Keller to receive this kickoff. Coming to Brown at the 11 yard line. He takes it to the right side, gets a block around the corner, leaps over somebody at the 30 yard line, but then met by a Trojan and brought down at the 31. Brown has done a pretty good job on these returns tonight for the Chargers. Jamarius Jackson, number 84, on that tackle for University. Yeah, they've got some speed. Both McAfee and, and Brown are really fast. That's why they're back kicking, taking the kickoffs. See if Eric Vance, the head coach, decides to keep it on the ground as that's been mostly the, the success for the Chargers so far here in the first half. McAfee in an eye formation behind the quarterback. They hand it to him. He's got some running room straight up the middle. Bumble. May have lost the football. Dears, he may have gotten back on it, or somebody in a white shirt got back on top of it. Coming up with the recovery is one of the offensive linemen, Austin Jackson. They say he was down before the fumble. We've got Andre Young, number 27, in at the left defensive end spot for University. Back if he picked up four yards on the play. Second down and six. Clock rolling with 144 left to go. Smith drops back, throws to the left. That is complete out to Jeremiah Parker. Zachary Reese along with Michael Davis defending on the play. Well, it looks like we had a flag on the play. Mm, they call a late hit. Joaquin Martinez. So that was good out to the 41 for a six yard pickup and a first down and then they'll also add 15 yards for the late hit. So 
We're down to the 44-yard line in the university's end of the field. Another, well, we got a whistle before things get going here. For 27, defense. University Five offside. Remains first down. So back-to-back -back penalties against the Trojans has helped the Chargers get into scoring position. Out of the 39-yard line in university territory. Smith looks right, now looks left, now throws left, has a man. Defender fell down and going into the end zone with the touchdown is Mason Caudle. Joseph Foster was the defender who fell down and left the wide open receiver. 39 yard pitch and catch from Smith to Cottle for the touchdown. Once again, the Chargers in the swinging gate. Score with 56 seconds left in the half. Checking with the sideline to see whether or not they're going to run the gate or not. There's down to four seconds. Yeah, they got to get something done. Looks like they're either going to call a timeout or take the penalty. Wow. Jay Falaster, number 21, is going to attempt the extra point. Number 11. Timeout. They can't decide what they want to do. Yep, they, you, know, you would think that they would have called the timeout prior to the penalty. Exactly. Because they have all their timeouts. They're swinging gate, two-point attempts. There's been a lot of confusion tonight, and it should be, it in my a, opinion, it just should be a simple either it's there or it's not. And <laughs> if it's not, have the coach yell, let's yeah. go kick it. It is the first game of the season, so you're trying to get out all the cobwebs. And, Sometimes you don't have the right personnel on the field because they're over checking out the cheerleaders or whatever. <laughs> but you know that that, that touchdown, saying hi to mom. Yeah, that touchdown drive though by Keller's puts them right back in the ball game. I mean, both teams are going up and down the field right now. Yeah. Defenses have struggled to stop either team. Okay, we're going to try it again, Jace. Laughter. Holden Myers is the is actually the holder. This one is good. 56 seconds left to go in our first half of play. University Trojans are up by 10 by a score of 30 to 20 after the Central Chargers go 69 yards in four plays. Took them a minute 45 to get on the scoreboard with that 39-yard pass to Cottle. As quick as uh, University can move the football down the field, they may have left too much time on the clock. <laughs> That's a possibility. Because Keller has struggled to stop University tonight, and they can they have the arm and the receiver to go right down that field again with plenty of time mm -hmm. and two timeouts. See what K. Ron Johnson and his offensive coordinator Holden Stewart want to do here. Jamarius Jackson, number 84, along with Carlos Perez, will be deep, but they've been pooching the ball over there in that right hand corner. Jay's laughter kicking off for Keller here late in the second quarter. Taking at the 35 and falling straight forward with it. 
for the University Trojans. I believe that was number 31. Oh, 31. I thought it was three. That would be Estelle. Trojans have the ball at their own 36 yard line. 53 seconds left to go. Cade Bynum will be the inside slot receiver to the far side. Savoy Dickles has Bell in the backfield with him. Looks to pass across the middle and in and out of the hands of Cade Bynum. Holden Myers defending on the play. Just a little too tall. Cade's only five foot nine. And off to Bell up the middle. Stays on his feet. Wow, breaking. Turning up near the 50 yard line. Trojans have two timeouts remaining. You get the timeout for the chains to move. Braden Nichols finally bringing them down, Lark, number yeah. 22. Picked up 14 out to the 50 yard line, first and 10. Nichols looking to pass, comes out to the flat to London Smith. He's forced out of bounds at the 40 yard line after about a 10 yard pickup. Gabriel Cobbs uses the sideline to knock London out. It's going to be a first down. Justin Nail coming into the game, number 15. 28 seconds on the clock. It stopped with the ball getting out of bounds. Actually, I marked it at the 39, 11-yard pickup on that pass. Play clock down to eight. Pitch in the flat to Bynum. It's a flea flicker, but apparently the play was stopped. University called timeout. Nelson Barnes says somebody called timeout. We have a timeout, timeout University. Mm. Player failing to wear his mouthpiece. Oh, a technical timeout because of a mouthpiece. Had that play set up perfectly. They certainly did. That's just one of those things that you got to take care of is your equipment. These officials are watching to make sure that safety is at the utmost, even when it comes to mouthpieces. That was a well, that was a well devised play. It just was. Now. I mean, they're only going to get to do it one time and that yeah. was it. Yeah, it's its own film. Yeah. People know it's there now. Yeah. London just went right past his yeah. defender. And it may be the last game of the year. You can pull that out again. Mm. 22 seconds left. Trojans with a first and 10 at the Chargers 39 yard line. Slot receiver on the far side is Jamari Thomas. He has not had a pass thrown to him tonight. Nichols throws. It's complete for a little more than 10 yards to Brooks. Oh, I'm sorry. He said it hit the ground. Okay. The, uh, I was waiting for a signal. Yeah, he did. Replay shows that he trapped it. Seventeen seconds left. Nichols gets out from under a rush. There he is. Has a man at the end zone. Did he overthrow him? He was out of bounds when he caught it. Across the end line. Jamari Thomas. Yep. First time they've targeted him tonight. Threw it a little too far. 
Seven seconds to go, you can throw either a quick 10 yard pass or you just do a Hail Mary. Yeah, if you throw that 10 yard pass, you gotta get it out of bounds. Right. Two receivers to each side. They hand it off up the middle. Bell can't wiggle his way free. One second left, so we'll get one more play. Not let the university call their final timeout. They had to to stop the clock. Now a flag thrown after the play. That's going to be on university, number 54. Somebody said something in there. Nelson Barnes tells tell us about the infraction. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 54 on the offense. After the play, 15-yard penalty. I'm going to mark it off from the 36-yard line. So give Bell a three-yard gain, but now I'll go back 15 yards for the unsportsmanlike. Now the dime marker says it's fourth down. I'm not positive. I think it's third down myself. I think it's third and 22 is what I believe. And they're all the way back to their own 49-yard line. This is where you take a knee and go to the house. Well, we may see Hail Mary here. Yeah, I mean, Keller's got three guys on the end zone line. They hand it off to Bell. And Bell will get it up to the 40-yard line for a gain of 11, but that's going to run out the clock on the first half of play. So we head to intermission with the University Trojans on top of the Keller Central Chargers by a score of 30 to 20. We invite you to stick around for our halftime activities for a special presentation in both the bands. Keith Willis is a proud graduate of Jefferson Moore High School from the class of 1983. Tonight, he is being escorted by Sam Price, one of his high school track coaches. Jerome Stewart is principal at Lago Vista High School. Nathaniel Haynes, longtime Waco ISD track and field coach. And Kevin Compton, longtime assistant head coach. Keith was a two-time state qualifier in track and field, and he was a first-team Super Syntex wide at receiver for the Lions. Upon graduation, Keith traveled to Sam Houston State where he became an all-Gulf star and all-Southland Conference pick. While at Sam Houston, the Bearcats won two conference championships and Keith led the nation in yards per catch at 25.1 yards per catch. Keith graduated with a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in 1988. After graduation, Keith was selected as a free agent pick with the Houston Oilers. After a short NFL career, he helped to cultivate a budding Spanish radio market in Houston where he sold the Astros and Rockets in Spanish. Later, Waco ISD gave Keith the chance to become teacher and coach. He served for 25 years. 17 of those years were in Waco ISD. Keith was the first athletic director and head football coach at Lago Vista ISD where he helped to start the football program. <clears throat> he was selected by the citizenry as Citizen of the Year in 1999 in Lago Vista, and his college football jersey number 18 was subsequently retired. In 2001, Keith rejoined Coach Johnny Tusa's staff at Waco High School, where in football they played for a state championship in 2006. In track and field, the team garnered several individual and relay state championships. In 2006, Keith was promoted to head boys track coach after the retiring of longtime head coach Nathaniel Haynes. Later that year, Keith was honored to be named Teacher of the Year at Waco High School campus. Next, Keith became the athletic director and head football coach at Marlin ISD. There, the football team became by district champs two years in a row, and the team and staff received the district co coach of the year 
and Tribune Herald's the Jinx Tucker Awards. Three years later, Keith became the head football coach and athletic director coordinator at Austin LBJ, where they were dis district runners up in football. The next year, Keith came back to Waco, where he was proud to serve as the head football coach and athletic coordinator at University High School. He retired from education in 2017. Today, Keith owns two small businesses with his wife and best friend, Charlene. Keith, Charlene, and their kids, Gabby, Terrence, Crystal, and CJ, and the rest of their family, would like to thank Coach Love, Coach Trocum, the Hall of Fame committee, and the entire WISD family for your consideration. Again, Keith Willis, the new inductee into the Hall of Fame. Congratulations again, Coach Keith Willis. First is Marcella Castro, third year band boot captain and librarian, joined by dad Carlos and mom Clara Bell and sister Mariana. Next, Anthony Castaneda, second year band member, joined by dad Anthony and mom Vanessa. Next, Osmar Casares. Fourth year band member and senior drum major joined by dad Jose, brother Irving, sister Dabani, and sister-in-law Litzy. Next is Nikavion Chiefs, second year band member joined by mom Andrea. Next is Mayana Christian, fourth year band member, clarinet captain, and logistics lead joined by mom Sheila and dad Avian. Next is Brandon Dominguez, fourth year band member, saxophone captain and historian, joined by his dad Ruben and mother Maria and brothers Christopher and Liam. Next is Kevin Gutierrez, fourth year band member and low brass captain, joined by mom Nancy and dad Jose, sister Kayla and brother Mateo. Next is Ivy Gutierrez, fourth year band member and front ensemble captain, joined by mom Regina and Dad Pete. Next is Joe Martinez, fourth year band member and trumpet captain. Joined by mom Francesca and dad Joe. Next is Adrian Martinez, fourth year band member joined by mom Leanne and grandma Susie. Next is David Perez, Fourth year band member, joined by mom, Alma, dad, Ruben, and sister, Linda. Next is Luciano Perez. Fourth year band member, joined by mother, Celestina, and dad, Matthew. Next is Yasmin Paragas. Fourth year band member, joined by dad, Yuduro, brother, Tito, and sister, Dulce, and sister, Jocelyn. Sorry, Dad Eduardo. Next is Emily Picasso, third year band member, joined by mom, Maria, dad, Roberto, and brother, Romeo. Next is Eli Ruby, fourth year band member and percussion captain, joined by mom, Vicky, and dad, Scott. Next is Christian Velasquez, fourth year band member and trumpet captain, joined by mom, Maria and Dad Miguel. Next is Albino Vasquez, third year band member joined by mom Linda and dad Albino. Please give all our seniors and family members a big round of applause for their efforts and dedication to the Mighty Trojan Band. We love you seniors. Are you ready to be entertained? Please get on your feet and cheer for the most dangerous band in the land. Showing it up in numbers and showing out a style guaranteed to make you smile. The mighty Trojan Marching Band.
we present to you the Trojan War. Revisit the walls of ancient Troy with us as our fearless leaders and champions via victory through bravery, deception, and fortitude. Only one army shall prevail on the ramparts of Troy. Your drum majors are Senior Drum Major Osmar Casares, Junior Drum Majors Andrea Monreal and Leobardo Gamma Saranto. Drum majors, is your band ready? Ladies and gentlemen, the mighty Trojan marching band. Assistant Director, Marching Band Director, and Steel Band Director, Mr. David Gerada. Color Guard Instructor, Ajax Hernandez. Horn Line Instructors include Augustine Jaimes and Archie Hatton V. Our UHS Administrative Staff includes Principal Mr. Alonzo McAdoo, Associate Principal Daniel Flegging, Assistant Principal Quinesha Johnson, Lisa Walker, Janae Beecham, Graylin Vining, and Victor Canola. We would like to thank our superintendent, Dr. Susan Kincannon, and our school board for their support for the Fine Arts in Waco ISD, and for our Fine Arts Director, Mr. Larry Carpenter, for all you do for our staff and students here in Waco ISD. Last but not least, please give another round of applause for these amazing students and for their ever-supportive parents and band booster for helping them make seasons fantastic. Without the band booster and parents, we wouldn't be where we are today. O-T-A-T, we are the MTB. Hope you enjoyed our halftime activities as the University Trojans return from the halftime locker room with a 30 to 20 halftime lead over the Keller Central Chargers. First half team statistics, the University Trojans have run 36 offensive plays for 291 yards. It's pretty well split up between rushing and passing, 9 of 15 passing for 176 yards, 21 rushing plays for 115 yards. Keller Central, meanwhile, 197 yards on 23 plays. They're just three of six passing for 56 yards. Most of their yards have come on the ground. 17 rushing plays for 141 yards. Individually, leading rusher is Keller Central's Dylan McAfee. He's carried six times for 95 yards. He needs to get the ball a lot more in the second half for the Chargers. Spencer Martin has carried six times for 37 yards. 
Trojans have been led by Ladarius Evans, seven carries for 51 yards. J.D. Bell's carried seven times for 41 yards. London Smith had one carry for 15 yards. A, a pretty good idea of balanced running backs back there in the backfield, each of them getting seven carries. That's exactly what the university is going to offer this year. They have a lot of balance, both passing and running the football. They've got athletes everywhere on offense. They're going to be tough to defend all year. And, of course, when it comes to reception, you would expect London Smith to be the top receiver in the game. He's caught five passes for 97 yards in the game and a couple of those for touchdowns. Yeah, Keller on defense is just having to back off a good 10 yards off these receivers just because University has so much speed. On the flip side, Keller, they've got a couple of, a couple of uh, men, McAfee and, and Brown, who have lightning fast speed also. So it's just uh, the defenses are going to have to try to make some adjustments during halftime to see if they can counter all this offensive firepower on both sides of the football for both teams. Well, you got to believe the offense, the defensive coaches for University finding a way to slow down the running game of the Chargers, especially McAfee. Meanwhile, the defensive coaches for the Chargers are going to have to find a way to slow down the passing game. Micah Hatton, number 19 for the University, is going to kick this ball off here to start the second half. McAfee and Brown will be deep for Keller at their 10-yard line. Again, it's a 10-point lead for the Trojans as we start the third quarter here at Waco ISD Stadium. Lark Smith along with Hal Harris. And our Trojans media productions crew along with our statistician Paul Comer. Here's the approach. Bit of a low liner come down at about the 12-yard line taken by McAfee going to the right side. Finds a crease up to about the 29-yard line. Tripped up by number 28, Darius Thomas for University. Nice tackle on that kickoff. So the Chargers will start at their own 29-yard line. Again, their offensive line. You've got the center, Dakota Lewis. The guards are Gabe Reyes and Logan the Hero. The tackles are Kylan Harris and Austin Jackson. Quarterback, Landon Smith. Has one running back in the backfield with him. That is McAfee. McAfee gets the handoff, goes up the middle, twists his way forward, gets about nine yards out of it, up to the 38-yard line. This is Caballero, along with Zachariah Ruiz. That's one tough running back for Keller. Brings up a second down and one. Smith looks to the sideline, see if there's a change of play with the play clock at 10 seconds now. Finally gets the play call. Let's his offensive line know about it. Play clock down to two, one, gets it off. Pass in the flat. Going to get a flag for face mask there. Pass complete to Jordan Brown. Dontre Kirkland. The defender is going to be penalized for that tackle. It's no foul. Face mask, number 12 on the defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. We got uh, Joseph Caballero had to come out of the game just now, number 16. The game was out to the 47-yard line. It was a pickup of nine on the play. Now add on the 15-yard penalty. And it's a first down all the way down to the university 38-yard line. Smith again will look to the far side. For the play call, the play clock's down to zero again. Apparently getting, nope, doesn't get it off in time. Or did the, I think time maybe this coaching staff call timeout. There's the first charge timeout of the half. So here we are, just a minute and 30 seconds into the second half, and Keller Central having to call a timeout because they can't get the play in on time. 
Well, you got a uh, new coach, first head coaching job. And speed of the game just takes a while to get used to the speed at which you got to operate and how quick you got to call the place. That's some of those things you hope you take care of during a scrimmage. Correct. Because it's not something you can necessarily duplicate during during practice. I guess you can if you have the, the equipment out there to make it all happen. But don't think it's something they focus on. I think they focus more on fundamentals, fundamentals. than they do the other things. Well, university's come out in a three-man defensive line here to start the second half. DQ Irwin along with uh, Cameron Kendall. And number 34, Elijah Chairs are in the defensive line for the university. Three receivers to the right. One of those goes in motion. The handoff goes straight up the middle to McAfee. McAfee trying to get some extra yards out of it. Gets a little push from this offensive lineman. They get it down to the 33-yard line for a gain of five on the play. 24, Laquan Hughes stood him up. That's a big back run in there. Off the right fence, number 14. That's a five-yard penalty. Replay first down. So it's going to be first and five as the flag goes against the University Trojans. Michael Davis, the uh, cornerback, was offsides. Got Laquan Hughes in for Joseph Caballero at the linebacker position. Again, a motion man coming around, but it's handed off once again to McAfee. He'll spin his way down near the 25-yard line for another first down for the Chargers. Zachariah Ruiz along with Derek Thomas in on the tackle. University starting to substitute the defensive line. Seven-yard pickup for McAfee. Has he gone over the 100-yard mark yet? Yes, he has. Got 116 yards on nine carries now. Ronald Derrick's back in the line along with Andre Young. Again, the handoff to McAfee. Finds a hole over left tackle inside the 20 down to about the 18. Juan, he's again on the tackle for the University. He's a sophomore. Get his first playing action of the season. Pickup of eight yards on the play. Bring up a second down and two. Once again, you have a 5A Division II team hosting a 6A team here in the season opener at Waco ISD Stadium. Joseph Caballero back in the ball game. Uh, coming out was Derek Thomas. Trojans did play a 6A team last year in non-district, Coppers Cove, and came out with the win. A little counter action in the backfield handoff to Spencer Martin. Martin stays on his feet and gets it inside the five-yard line. Ronald Derrick, defensive lineman with a touchdown saving tackle at the three-yard line. Gain of 14 on the play for Spencer Martin. Again, it's Martin. He'll dive into the end zone for the touchdown from four yards out. Very impressive uh, offensive series to start the second half for Keller. Just tough running right up the middle. There was one pass play and a couple of penalties in the drive. Once again on the swinging gate, Got trying flag. to get into the end zone is There's a flag. Austin Moon. See what the mean of the flag is, though. See if e logo formation, offense, that penalty is declined. The try is no good. Apparently they lined up in the swinging gate improperly. But the university will decline the penalty, and the score is University 30 and Keller Central 26 with eight minutes and 30 seconds left to go in the third quarter. That was a 71-yard drive. It took seven plays and 3.30 off of the third quarter clock. Again, Hal, seven plays, 71 yards. Again, about 10 yards a play. That's, that's a lot of rushing yards. 
They look to be a little bit bigger physically in the line uh, than the university's defensive line. But you've got to make adjustments. Trojans will be at home again next week. They'll play a Thursday game this next week. Is that? Yeah, they play the Thursday game against uh, Granbury. Going back for university be number 13, Carlos Perez, along with number 84, Jamarius Jackson. We'll be taking this kickoff from number 21, Jace Laughter. Play clock's rolling, just waiting for the Chargers to get set up for the kickoff. Popped it up to the far side, a fair catch call for over there at the 28-yard line. Taken in by Estelle. University Trojans get the football for the first time in the second half from their own 29 yard line. University's offensive line, you got Carlos Navarro at center. The guards are Leonte Walker along with Bolo Dowling. The tackles are Gio Longoria and Micah Willis. Savoy Nichols, the quarterback. Pitches on the inside. Wide receiver sprint to Bynum, and Bynum's out to the 35-yard line, a gain of six on the play. Holden Myers on the tackle, but Bynum's down on the ground. That's not a good sign. I think he took one in the calf on that hit. Trading staff out to take a look at Cade Bynum. I believe he had some cramping problems in our first half. He did. Well, that looks more like a shoulder problem he's trying to overcome here. He's a tough old boot. We'll probably see him in the game. The second down and four from the university 35 yard line. I think Jamar Thomas is in and his replacement number three for university. He's in the middle of the three receivers on the far side. They hand it off to Bell. Bell bounce, tries to bounce it outside, finds some running room inside, gets it up to the 40 yard line, maybe across the 40 to the 41. Pick up a six and another first down. Holden Myers again on the tackle. Nice bit of running that time by Bell. Bell with his eighth carry of the night has 47 yards. Nichols looking to pass across to London Smith. And he's got it into Charger territory down to their 40 yard line. Pick up a 19 on the play. Dylan Pico. London's coming off, off the field. That was a really good pass by Savoy Nichols. Threaded it right in there. Evans at the running back spot now for the Trojans. Fake the handoff to him with throwing the flat. That is complete to Jamari Thomas. Gabriel Thomas, though, so knocked out of bounds for no gain. Second and ten. Actually, it looks like they lost a yard on the play back to the 41. We've got Bynum back in the game in the slot position. And he's got the football. 
Gets it inside the 30 to the 29 on the pass from Savoy Nichols. It's a 12 yard pickup on the play and another first down. Third first down in the drive for the Trojans. Started back with their own 29. And off to Bell. He's hit in the backfield, but drags a man up to the 28 yard line for a gain of one. Jeremiah Parker, number two, attack Keller. Clock rolling with 6.30 to go. They say there's no gain on the play. They mark him down to 29. Second and 10. Nichols across the middle. Once again, Bynum comes up with a nice catch. Austin Martin. Him down to the turf, but not after a seven yard gain. Right out to the 22 yard line. It's just a quick slant that they hit Bynum with there. Bynum going to come off the field again. They've got two downs to get three yards. Evans bounces around the left side, has the first down, gets down to about the 15-yard line. Chandler David finally rushing him down to the ground. Showing a lot of speed there by Ladarius Evans around the corner. Now the pickup of seven yards down to the 15. Fourth first down in the drive. Number 33, Thomas Vendana is into the ball game for University. Taking over for Keandre Brooks, who's come to the sideline. Nichols hands it off to Evans. Over left tackle. He's into the end zone for the touchdown. Boy, some nice blocking there by the offensive line to get Evans into the end zone from 15 yards out. Well, he wasn't touched, was he? He wasn't at all. You got two defenses that are pretty gassed, to be honest with you. Teams have gone to just the length of the field on both sides, both teams all night long. Went after a tip. Yeah, they're going to try for two now. They changed their mind. Well, they got about 15 seconds to get the playoff, get the right personnel on the field. Robert Stevens has checked in at one of the wideout positions on the near side. Nichols takes the snap, gives it to Bell. Bell heads for the end zone and is in for the two-point conversion. That's his third two-point conversion of the night. So with five minutes, five seconds left to go in our third quarter of play, the University Trojans on top of the Keller Central Chargers by a score of 38 to 26. Well, both teams in the second half, both had 71 yard drives. And we still have five minutes left in the third quarter. So we're moving the ball down the field pretty quickly. Trojans go 71 yards in nine plays. It took three minutes and 25 seconds. So each team has had the ball once here in the second half, and each team has been able to go on a nice long drive of 71 yards each. Last year, Keller averaged 11 points a game. This is not even close to the same kind of team. I don't believe that was not able to put that many points up last year. They, they've shown a lot of firepower tonight. Mainly just with a good running game. Their head coach, Eric Vance, coming over from L.D. Bell in the Hearst area. His first job as a head coach. We've got Brown and McAfee deep to take this kick from Micah Hatton, number 19 for University.
Opted up to the 25 yard line taken in there by Parker. Parker goes to the far side of the field and get about five yards out of the return and then a flag at the end of the play. Derek Thomas with the tackle number 18 for the University. See the meaning of the hanky. Nelson Barnes and crew will let us know. Hold number 26 on the receiving team. 10 yard penalty, first down. That'll take it back to the 20 yard line. Is that 10, 12 penalties now? Yes. Yeah, that will be addressed during the film session tomorrow at locker room at Keller Central. Zion Wright, number 90. Number 34, Elijah Chairs. And that defensive line along with number 20, Amari and Kendall. McAfee, the running back in the backfield with Landon Smith. Smith looking to pass to the left flat. It is complete. Mason Cottle coming up with the catch out at the 30, at the, excuse me, the 26 yard line for a gain of six. Jeremiah Green with the tackle and sevens down on the ground hurt. You get up in the air to catch that ball, you're a little vulnerable whenever somebody is right there to take you to the turf. The linebackers for university on this particular series will be uh, number zero, Joaquin Martinez, number 16, Joseph Cavallero, along with number 21, Marnie Franklin. Had a, give us a chance to let you know about our crew from Trojan Media Productions. We've got camera operators, Jace Lynn, Brianna Portis, Brooklyn Starts, Isaiah Vasquez, Eric Moon, and Autumn Booker all taking care of our cameras tonight. Eva Rodriguez is our sideline reporter. Jacob Montoya taking care of instant replay and in the booth with us taking care of the audio is Aaron Taylor. All under the direction of Arizona Sardinetta and the executive producer and their teacher Justin Sanchez. Guys and gals, we thank you for your work tonight and all season long from Trojan Media Productions. They're going to help Cottle to the sideline. He's been one of the favorite targets for Landon Smith tonight. He is walking on his own power and we'll see where the coach and the trainer are helping him a whole lot get to the sideline. That's always a good sign when they can pretty much get there on their own power. We've got Landon Smith playing a defensive corner for University. Send a man in motion. Not sure he knows where to line up just yet. Now he gets into the tight end position. Handoff goes to McAfee, and McAfee goes straight up the gut. Has the first down as he gets out to the 34-yard line. Joseph Cavallaro in on the tackle. Number 98, Leroy Thomas coming into the defensive line. Along with Devontae Kirkland back into the game after out for one play with a cramp. Another first down for the Central Chargers. McAfee takes the handoff. Has another six yards up to the 40. Juan Hughes in on the tackle. Juan Martinez coming out of the game. 139 yards for Dylan McAfee on just 12 carries so far tonight. He has been the workhorse for the Chargers. And that has been their most effective offense is running the football. The 
And McAfee takes the handoff, stumbles his way up for another first down as he gets it up to the 45-yard line. Tripped up by Zachary Reese. Pretty simple stuff, huh, Hal? It is. I think McAfee, <laughs> he may be having a cramp here, too. Number three for Keller. Yeah, well, they got that Spencer Martin guy to spelling. Yeah, they're working on the calf. It is early in the year. This is when we normally see a lot of cramps. It's not an overly warm night here at Waco ISD Stadium. Had an 88-degree temperature at kickoff, which is a little cooler than what we're used to for an August August football game. He still isn't able to get up. Now, these offenses are putting a lot of pressure on all the defensive players on both sides of the ball. McAfee on his feet. Going to run off the field. We'll see him again. Marion Kendall along with DQ Irwin. And Elijah Chair is in on the defensive line for the University at this time. Sophomore running back. Spencer Martin in the backfield with Landon Smith, their quarterback. Trips to the right of the formation. Looking to pass. Got plenty of room. Still looking, still looking. Now just going to run out of bounds. That was a good coverage by the University defense but excellent blocking by the offensive line. We've got another university player down. Let's see who it is. That's number 12. That's 12, Kirkland. He was fighting a cramp just a minute ago, two plays before this one. Smith with a loss of five on the play. Bring up a second down and 15, but Kirkland on his feet, and he'll be able to walk to the near sideline and walk off that cramp. Yeah, London Smith's going to replace him. Maybe I need to start a pickle juice concession. You can sell quite a bit of it tonight <laughs> to both players on both sides of the ball. Well, once again, Kirkland down being looked at by his head coach. As well as the training staff. Kirkland just a sophomore. If you remember last year, he played several games as a true freshman for university in the defensive backfield. Chargers are ready to go as soon as the injured player can find his way to the near sideline. Smith throws underneath, completes it to his running back, Martin, and he is slaughtered when he gets to the 45-yard line. No. Yeah. <laughs> Five-yard gain on the play, but he paid for those five yards. Now we've got Joaquin Martinez. He's, he's down on the ground. That was a good pass play by Keller because Joseph Caballero blitzed from that exact side where that running back was wide open. Mm -hmm. Wasn't a giant game, but quarterback threw it to the right place. Players may need to start carrying a gallon jug of water with them to class. Sip on it all day long. That'll help with the cramping some. We've got uh, number 22, Juan Martinez, will come in for Joaquin Martinez. Looks just like it's a, just a cramp, but those got to hurt. 
Charlie Horse is never fun. Two receivers to each side. Spencer Martin remains as the running back. Smith sends a man in motion, put three receivers to the near side. He's setting up the screen pass, and it's broken up. Oh, an outstanding defensive play there for the Trojans. Marty Franklin saw it all the way. So the screen pass goes for not, leaves it fourth and ten. And it looks like the Chargers are going to have to punt. I think this is only like the second punt we've seen in the game, isn't it? It is the second punt. Cade Bynum is deep to receive the punt. Looking to pass the ball. Landon Smith looking downfield for a receiver. And he's got the first down if it's a completed pass. And they say it is. They're the two. They're going to talk about it, whether he was in or out. They say it's incomplete. So the Chargers roll the dice and try to get the first down. Each team has now turned the ball over on downs once in the game. Trojans get it with 2.35 left to go in the third quarter, leading by 12 at 38 to 26. And they'll have it in Charger territory at the 45 yard line. It'll be the fourth time tonight that they've started inside the opponent's 50 yard line. They get the ball with 2.35 left to go in the third quarter. Got another cramp. J.D. Bell just got a cramp when he came onto the field. So we've got Ladarius Evans in it, running back. Got 12 seconds left of the play clock. Bad snap. Down, down at his feet. Nichols just decides to sit down with it and lose about six yards back to the 49 in his own territory. Not a bad idea. Will not take any more loss than necessary. Pitch goes to Bynum coming around the corner. He's got blockers and gets it inside to the 35 yard line. And actually, he's going to be in the 30 40. He picks up the first down. Darius Evans, along with Gio Longoria, were providing that little uh, blocking cushion there for about 15 yards. He picked up 16 on the play. Down to the 34. Put an H back into the formation. That H back is Thomas Vadana. Nichols to pass, looking to his left, going deep, and it's incomplete, intended for London Smith. Good coverage by the Keller defensive backs on that play. That ought to earn him a star on his helmet. Have good defense against London Smith. It's Austin Moon defending on the play. This is going to be the wide receiver to the bottom of your screen. And off goes to Evans. He cuts it back up the hash marks and goes all the way down to the 26 yard line. Austin Martin with the tackle. From the safety position. Pick up of eight on the play for Evans. It's up a third down and two. Send the H back to the left of the formation. Nichols fakes the pitch to the receiver coming across and hands it off to Evans, who gets it down to the 21 and another first down. 
pick up a five on the play. Or Darius Evans. Drudge is doing a good job of milking the last 235 off the third quarter clock here. Well, they try to extend their 12 point lead. Send London Smith in motion. They do give him give it to him this time on the inside pass. He'll get it down to the 19 yard line for a two yard pickup. Hayden Snow along with Austin Martin wrapping up. London Smith. He's coming off the field. That's the way into the quarter. Keller's defense here in the last two or three plays and said their safety's being 12 yards back. They've only been about seven yards, so they. University Trojans have decided to let the third quarter clock run down, head to the other end of the field the the with quarter. the lead at 38 to 26 as we start the fourth quarter. Now, this special interview brought to you by Eva Rodriguez. Hi, I'm Eva Rodriguez, and I'm here with Waco ISD Coach Willis. How are you, Coach Willis? Doing great, Eva. How are you? I'm good. And today I have a few questions to ask for you. How do you feel to receive this honor? Oh, Eva, it's unbelievable. It's a, an un unbelievable honor, and uh, that's exactly what it is. I'm just so honored to uh, uh, be able to, to accept this award. I feel like not, not just for me, but for all of my teammates, you know, uh, teammates, former players, former coaches, guys who I've coached with. You know, more than that, the teachers, as a student in the Waco ISD schools, I, you know, that's, I just felt so much love coming out of Waco ISD. I mean, teachers loved us. They propped us up. They made us feel like we were somebody. And then, of course, they tried to teach people like me. So, you know, so I, I, I'm really lost at a loss for words. But the, the one thing that comes to my mind is just thank you, thank you, thank you. I love that. And what does Waco ISD mean to you? Waco ISD means the world to me. Like, like I said, I just think that they gave us, uh, most kids, the footing that they need to be business people to be artists, to be doctors, lawyers, designers, just whatever your heart's desire. If, if, if a guy, a young lady can, uh, can come out of South Waco or North or East Waco and make it out of Waco High and University and, and uh, feel good about themselves, they can make it anywhere. And so that's, that's the way I feel. It, it, it's, it, it only gets better. And uh, so I'm very proud to be a proud, you know, graduate of the Waco ISD schools in general. Thank you so much, Coach Willis, and congratulations. Back to you, Lark. All right, we're about to start the final 12 minutes. The University Trojans with a 12-point lead as they head to the fourth quarter. On a drive that started at the Charger 45, down to the 19-yard line, trying to extend that lead. Kate Bynum in at quarterback with the keeper going around the left side. There's nobody there. He's into the end zone for the touchdown. Got three flags on the field. Well, that'll probably bring that back. Item just now realizing it. Well, couldn't understand Nelson Barnes as his mic was cutting out, but the bottom line is it's against the University Trojans and takes it back to the 29 yard line. 10 yard walk off. He's up second and 18. At the 24. Oh, excuse me, at the 29. There we go. We've got Robert Stevens, number 81, as a wide receiver, along with Carlos Perez, number 13. Bynum will take the quarterback keeper and get free down to the 20, into the 10, 5. He tried to get that touchdown back, didn't he? Dylan PQ, number 24, finally on the tackle. He is really just, you can see why he's such a good receiver, but you can also see why he's a starting quarterback last year. 23 yards 
Brings up first and goal for the Trojans from the six. Mains in at quarterback with Jadarius Bell as his running back. Not sure why we have a stoppage of play here. Maybe Nelson Barnes will explain it to us. That will be explained it to Aaron Johnson right now. I don't know. Timeout called by the Chargers. Yeah, they haven't taken the timeout yet on University off the, off the scoreboard. Yeah, I think we're all kind of wondering why a play was stopped here. Officials need an arrest. I don't know. They're about ready to get back to play. They don't have any timeouts taken off the board. They're ready to go. Even the clock keepers ask me, why we had the timeout? Who called it? Bynum takes a low snap, rolls right, throws back. And it is. Incomplete. Tried to get that into Justin Neal, but apparently a little too low. Well, they say Neal trapped it. Second and goal from the six. Kind of like the play call, a little throwback pass like that that catches the defense going the wrong way. Bynum again takes his low snap, gets away from one would-be tackler, has a blocker on the edge, and will get close to the end zone, but a yard short. Chandler David stood him up there at the one-yard line, maybe the one-foot line. The third and goal inside the one. Back to Boy Nichols, quarterback position. Well, this sounds like Jajarius Bell territory. Decided to just let him try to, well, line it up like it's going to be a quarterback sneak by Savoy Nichols. And sure enough, he sneaks it in for the six. Second time tonight. Time out. University. That's our second charge time out of the half. Well, apparently now we have that first timeout was called by University, and now they've called a timeout before the snap. So they're down to one now. So take my touchdown off the board. <laughs> Apparently that earlier timeout was charged against University that we weren't sure who it was charged against. You know, Savoy Nichols, he's, he's got a limp to him also, so I don't know if he's got cramps also. And that may be why Cade was in the back in the game as a start quarterback here for the last few plays. As they huddle up there, Nichols kind of rubbing at the calves and walking like me. See if they decide to do the quarterback sneak again here. Or they do send a couple of wide receivers out to the near side. And they're going to go from the shotgun with J.D. Bell as the running back. Slow snap. Bell takes the handoff, and he's corralled at the two. Well, he got all messed up off the snap. Wasn't a good snap. Snap at the shoestrings will kind of ruin the play or the timing of the play. The well, university was out without the bottom. 
game without London Smith, so they had their best two receivers on the sideline right now. Jamari Thomas and Keandre Brooks are back in. It's two of the three receivers, along with Robert Stevens, number 81. Play clock down to two, one. He didn't get it off. Delay a game penalty, gonna run it back. Offensive coordinator Ball not start. real happy right now. Offense, number 81. It took so Five long to penalty. get off the penalty. Remains fourth down. Well, fourth down now and goal from the seven. Big feather in the hat of the Chargers defense if they can hold here. Nichols asking for the snap, not getting it. Call play another clock. timeout. They got to do something. Yeah, they're going to have to call a timeout because the play clock was down to Time one. University, that's their third and final timeout of the half. The Trojans have used all their timeouts within the last minute and a half. They have. Uh, They've struggled on this series, trying to get the right play in. Well, that and also trying to get the right personnel out there. Right, thanks they're to short two of their starters, and so it's, uh, it's changed up what kind of play calls they want to deliver. Yeah, the Trojans are on top, 38 to 26, and just Kate finally put his. He had his jersey off for a couple of plays. He just finally, he may be coming back onto the field now. But I still haven't seen London Smith. Boy Nichols sitting on the sideline right now, getting attended to. Trying to stretch out that calf. Okay, we're going to try field goal. That's what's going to happen. Number 19, Micah Hatton. First attempt of the year. Be a 23-yarder. Offensive line going, where's my deep snapper? Finally, Juan Martinez heads out there. About to be if they don't get this snap off in the next three seconds. They get it off. Kick is good. 24-yard field goal comes with 9.42 left to go in the game. Extends the Trojans' lead to 15 at 41 to 26. Drive before it stalled. Yep. Chewed up a lot of, a lot of time, a lot of timeouts for University. It's going to be up to the defense. They stopped them last time. I don't know if Savoy Nichols will be able to come back into the game with his cramps that he's. Enduring and Kate Bynum's just going to have to take over. Going back for Keller will be number three, Dylan McAfee, and number eight, Jordan Brown. Took him three minutes and 53 seconds to go 50 yards in 11 plays to get that 24 yard field goal from Hatton. Hadn't set the ball up, kickoff for University here. 9.42 to go in the fourth quarter. I have to go through my record to see the last time a University team scored 41 points in a game. Been a while. Popped it up. It bounces. University had a chance to get to it. A nice job coming up to recover it by Gabriel Cobb for the Chargers. A 
That'll start this possession at their 33 yard line. With 9.42 left to go. McAfee back in the backfield. And the eye behind the quarterback who sends a man in motion. Turns and hands it to McAfee, and McAfee hit in the backfield. No gain on the play for McAfee. Elijah Chairs knocked him down. Excellent tackle by the left defensive end for University. See Chairs shed a block there and come in and make the tackle. A few times they've held McAfee to zero yards. That was his 14th attempt of the night. Smith fakes the handoff, pitches out in the flat. Brown has it up to the 40-yard line before he's dragged out of bounds. Joseph Caballero grabbing him by the shoulder pads and shoving him out. Pick up a seven on the play. He's up a third and three. See, Kirkland tried to come back in, but he's still got those cramps. They hand it off to McAfee coming around the left side, slides one would-be tackler and is off to the races. Staying on his feet, tiptoeing the sidelines. Finally steps out of bounds. They mark him at the 28-yard line. Pick up a 12 on the play. Really good piece of running. Watch this balancing act going down the sideline. Unfortunately, he stepped out, but he was doing his best to keep the balance, keep it going. McAfee trying to get around the right side, reverses his field. Joseph Caballero cutting him down at the, at the uh, ankle. Did a good job to at least get close back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a loss of one on the play for McAfee. Andre Young, number 27, coming in at the left defensive end for Charles. Mark him at the 30-yard line here. Drop the football, Smith is corralled and will lose yardage back to the 33. Kamarian Kendall on in on the tackle. Andre Young put some pressure on him. DQ Irwin coming in at the uh, nose guard position. He's had a little trouble with his running back, Spencer Martin, and who is gonna hold on to the football. up a third down and 14 from the University 33 yard line clock rolling with under 740 to play. And off goes to Spencer Martin and he's thrown out of bounds at the 30 yard line. A horse collar tackle is going to add to that. He picked up four but they're going to get the first down on the penalty. Number 21 on the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So it's a face mask penalty. That was, that was Armani Franklin, but he's not coming back. He's still down, and we can't see him from our uh, vantage point. Move the ball down to the 15-yard line. First and 10. And off to McAfee, Fumble. fumbles the football. It goes forward. I believe a charger is falling on the ball. Nope, University comes up with the football. And Jeremiah Green got that ball. It is McAfee with the football that somehow managed to lose it. That's our first turnover of the game, is it not, Hal? It is, and it's a huge turnover. They're getting ready to punch it in and get it back within one score with plenty of time left on the clock here. This has been a track meet tonight. Well, the Trojans 90 yards away from another touchdown. 
trying to roll 720 off the clock and get a win in their season opener here at Waco ISD Stadium. Okay, Savoy Nichols is he is back in. Bell in the backfield with him. Bell takes the handoff, drives forward, keeps the legs churning, stays on his feet, sends somebody a little further down the field. He carried Dylan Bichu with him up to the 25-yard line. That was a really good piece of running. Refused to go down. Bell picks up 15 yards on the play out to the 25 and the university first down. A lot of times late in the game when you're tired, it's hard to wrap up a running back who's coming at you full speed. It certainly is. Good snap. Bell straight up the middle. Gets it out to the 31 for a gain of six. Jaden Snow bringing him down 17 on a linebacker. Pick up a six on the play. Still hadn't seen London Smith come back into the ball game. Trojan offense doing what they can to drain game clock here. Again, it's Bell up the middle. This time he's met for just a yard at gain up to the 32. I think that was Ladarius Evans on that carry. You are correct. It was Evans. Thank you, sir. Brings up a third down and three. Around the 32. Evans remains the running back. They put a tight end to the right of the formation. Snap it goes underneath Nichols and it's going to be recovered by the Chargers yep. inside the 25 yard line. Another low snap that Nichols not able to handle. And coming out with the football for the Chargers is Chancellor David. Well, no turnovers until the last seven minutes of this contest. Each team has coughed the ball up. Five minutes and 20 seconds left to play. And once again, how the Chargers have a chance to make it a one score game. And you know, they're gonna run the football, no doubt about it. And there's plenty of time. Plenty of time to score and then they will have to hold the university though. The university could drive it right down the field too. You get the ball at the university 26 yard line. Make that the 24, I'm sorry. 24 yard line. I had a problem with the snap. And everybody on the offense thought it should have been on one and the center apparently thought it was on two. Officials gonna confer side to call offside on University. Hmm. First and five at the 19. Trojan band getting into it, trying to encourage the defense to get the stop here. Smith under pressure, gets away from it, rolls his left, throws for the end zone. Incomplete. Marion Kendall putting a ton of pressure. Smith. Really good coverage though by the defensive back there in the far left. That stops the clock with 5-12 left to go. And eligible receiver downfield. Usually happens when the quarterback scrambles around like that, so that'll give back that five yards they gave up a moment ago. Takes it back to the 25.
from the 24. Actually, it's second down and 10. Once again, they hand it off. This time it's Spencer Martin. Gets it down to the 21 for about a three, four, three yard gain. Zachariah Ruiz on the tackle. Third and seven. Two downs to make the first down to keep the drive going. They can't kick a field goal, it's too late in the game. Smith rolling right. Had a man on the button hook, didn't throw it. Gets out from under pressure. Now rolling to the left, throws, and it's incomplete, but a flag thrown from the umpire. Another ineligible downfield, most likely. Yeah, Andre Young putting a ton of pressure on Smith there, the quarterback. Number 52. That penalty is declined. Yeah. Third down. They'll decline it. It was an incomplete pass. Elijah Chairs back in at left defensive end for University, replacing Andre Young. Third and seven from the 21. I'll make that fourth and. You see it. I think it ought to be fourth down if they end. Declined the penalty. Smith throws for the flat, in and out of the hands, incomplete. Trying to get that one out to Amari Granville. Michael Davis defending on the play. DQ Irwin coming back in and nose guard. Clock stopped with 416 left to play. Trojans up 41 to 26. Goes for the corner of the end zone, picked off at the goal line. Going the other way with it for the Trojans is Jamar, Jamar, Jeremiah Green. There we go. Jeremiah Green has the first pickoff of the year for the Trojans as he gets it with it right at the goal line. Right. He, uh, quarterback underthrew that pass. Jeremiah was right there to take care of it. Turn him over and get the ball back. First and 10 with four minutes to go in the game. Again, the Trojans on top, 41 to 26. Okay, we got Kate Bynum back in the game. Slop position. On the 20 yard line. Nichols hands it off to Evans. Evans over right tackle. Takes it out to the 23 yard line for a three yard pickup. Keller defense for sure playing run all the way. Uh, we got a lineman down. 54, Michael Willis. Probably a cramp. We have had our share of those tonight. Dominic Carrillo, a sophomore in at that tackle position for at least one play. Trojans left or led 30 to 20 at halftime. 11 to six. The score here in the second half. Still the university on top. That's one of those things you want to do is you want to win every quarter. You want to win every quarter is correct. It's impossible to lose if you outscore them in every quarter. Yeah, 
They look for another run here. And, I mean, their linebackers are within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Their safeties aren't deep at all anymore. They're just playing flat out run. Carrillo takes over at the left tackle position. They send Bynum in motion. He gets the pitch underneath, tries to cut it up. And there's not a whole lot there. Maybe gets it back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Holden Myers again with the tackle number 41 from Keller. Yep. J.D. Bell coming back in the game at running back position. Third and seven at the 23. Under three minutes left to go. Handed off to Bell. He gets a nice running start. Boy, when he gets when he gets to locomotion, you're not going to be able to hold him back for much. Dylan Piku with the tackle. Bell picked up the first down all the way out to the 36-yard line. That's a giant first down for University. That keeps the clock rolling now. The Chargers do have two timeouts left. The Trojans have used all three of theirs. Right now, they don't need any timeouts. Now, Kate's the quarterback. With Bell in the backfield with him. Mina will follow the blocks of Bell. Now, bounces around the left side and get it up to the 39-yard line. Gain a three on the play for Bynum. Braden Nichols, along with Austin Moon, bringing him down. This is where you just say roll, clock, roll. Offensive coordinator doing his job of waiting until 15 seconds left on the play clock before calling the play. Nichols turns and hands it off to Evans. Evans pushes his way up to the 40-yard line. Bryson Barden got a hold of him, wouldn't let him go. Just a one-yard pick up there, going to bring up third and six. They finally called a timeout. I was wondering why they were holding their timeouts. The Chargers use one of their remaining two timeouts with a minute 29 left on the game clock. Trojans looking to start off the season with a win over a 6A opponent. Again, the Trojans will be at home next week as well to take on Granbury. That's a team that Waco High is playing tonight on the road. two games here at Waco ISD Stadium next week. But Darius Evans is the running back from this particular play for University. One more first down in this ball game is over. Take the handoff to Evans. They're going to throw deep. London Smith, or excuse me, that's not London Smith. That is uh, DeAndre. DeAndre Brooks, yeah. A lot of speed by Keandre. He's fast runner, too. And all the way down to the 21-yard line. That's a 69 yards. 59 yards, 59 yards on the pass to Keandre Brooks for the first down with the clock now under a minute. Nichols hands it off to a new running back in the backfield. That's Darius Thomas, a junior with the carry.
28. See Darius Thomas go around the right side, and now the Chargers are going to call their final timeout. You can take two knees, and the game's over. Had a really nice crowd on hand tonight for this season opener for the Trojans. And I got a feeling the more they win, the larger these crowds are going to get. Yes. It is a very exciting team to watch this year. They have a lot of offensive firepower. Yeah, 520 yards of offense to this point. Still, maybe one or two teams or one or two plays to make. Thomas in at a tailback position behind the quarterback, Nichols. And Nichols will take a knee. Well, I have to do that maybe one more time. Call it a night, the party's over. Both teams played really well tonight. Well, the officials didn't even start the play clock, so that's the last play of the game. Yep. University Trojans. Go to the locker room with a 30 to 20 lead and extend it in the second half and come away with a 41 to 26 win over the Keller Central Chargers. Trojans with 520, 515 yards of total offense while the Chargers had 338. That's a happy Season opener for the Trojans with the 41 to 28, make that 41 to 26 win. Many thanks to all the folks with from Trojan Media Productions for your work tonight. Also, thanks to Paul Comer for his stats. And for Hal Harris, I'm Lark Smith. So long from Waco ISD Stadium. We'd like, We'd like to present the winning team trophy to the University Trojans for a 41 to 26 victory tonight over the Keller Central Chargers. Congratulations. Next, Next we'd, like we'd like to recognize the offensive player tonight from the University of Trojans, number one, London Smith. And from the University of Trojans, the defensive player, number 25, Jeremiah Green. We want to thank the people from Keller for participating in tonight's game. Please have a safe trip home. Don't take any extra chances or anything. Just make sure you're safe on the highway. Appreciate you being here. Thanks again from Waco ISD. This is saying good night from Waco ISD.